Bit. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Um, I, I was at Gate 5 uh, in those four days in uh, 1986. Uh, my question is, now you're talking about the young people and now uh, we're all, I guess, at this point we're in, uh, and that was, that was my dad's time. That's, I, I can't relate to that. How do these young people who have benefited from a lot of the freedoms that were gained during that time and have expanded exponentially, um, what do you think is lost on them or is, is, uh, has become part of the generation gap about EDSA? Because now they just read about it in books, they hear the stories, they see it online. Uh, but for the people who were there and, you know, it, it, like I said, it was a different time and they're preparing for their future. But what are the messages and the lessons you think that they, that they may have lost you know, over the last 30 years and they can't seem to relate to anymore? <coughs> Sir, I'll take first question. Bill, uh, you have to take me seriously on this. Huh? Uh, avoid <laughs> using the word or. Use the word and more often. Why is it always, even from a historical viewpoint? Is it uh, Aguinaldo or Bonifacio? Is it General Antonio Luna or? Diba? Why not Rizal and Aguinaldo and Luna and Bonifacio? The founding fathers of the U.S. were we copied our democracy, no? We're imperfect men. And so were our national heroes, no? Who said, we said, we chick boy. Imagine, no? So, it has to be end. And I guess that is the story of our lives, which you must try to learn as accurately as you can, no? We seem to be more loyal to our families more than our country. Uh, forgetting that if we build a strong nation, it will benefit our families, our communities. Uh, we'll be secure in our homes. Pati ngayon, Bill, di ba? Mga bahay natin, pinapasok na ng rapists at uh, you know, uh, criminals. No? Uh, we have to be secure. We cannot separate anymore. And this I suggest to you, uh, younger guys, no? We cannot separate anymore our home from our country and our families from our people. And I ask everybody, what do you want to do at the end of the day? What do I want to do no, at the end of the day? Uh, I want to go home to a family that is safe, no, strong, and truly free. And anybody who gets in the way, and you know my history, Bill, I will fight with or without uh, others uh, beside me. So just to learn, try to learn from history and develop more, more unity, you know, more, more peace. I, I look forward to harmony in our homes, uh, cooperation in our communities, order in the state, a sense of national priorities, and inclusive growth you know, in our nation. Uh, you have the tools. You have access, almost free access to information, just be responsible for what you access into. No? So that's my two cents worth. No? And that, that was the lesson of it, Edsa. What we can achieve united as a people, no? uh, clear about what we are for or than what we are against. That's uh, my, my suggestion. Can I, can I add a little? Billy, you asked about why uh, Edsa doesn't seem to be relevant to the youth or even the people now? If it is, I mean, have they lost anything from the 30 years? Could it be, could it be that uh, the aims, the goals of ENSA 30 years ago were hardly achieved? Well, we have our freedom of speech, we have some freedoms now, but there is still corruption, violence, and, and so on. A uh, lot of people I talk to say, wala namang pagbabago eh. Very little, if any. Is, is that a possible reason? <coughs> My problem is uh, I have too much time. That's why I read a lot. <coughs> That's why the ideas do not come quickly. But your question brings to mind the importance of the family. Uh, too often we say that the government should do this, the government should do that, and that's true. There are things that the government should do. But sometimes it's easy for the family to to lose 
or to, there's a word for it, but I cannot think of it right now, to, to default on the duty to bring up their children. Because you, you look at us here, we are not just us, we are our family. How my mother brought me up, how my father brought me up, how my brothers and sisters, I, I happen not to have brothers and sisters, but it's a similar thing. That what your family is, is what you are. It's what you are. And if you look at, for instance, in a radio broadcast, and there's a, a TV broadcast or TV show, there's a news that this guy did something horrible. And he's, a, he's a young person. He's, and then you talk to the parent, the parent says, um, <laughs> and then, uh, instead of talking like that, you go ahead and give him a bump in the head so that he will realize that he did something wrong. He burned the hands of his friend or so forth. Wala nang assertion ng family, parang ang pamilya, uh, tatay, may pagkain pa tayo, nanay ang damit ko. Hindi lang yun eh. Yung nanay ko, school teacher, pero ang ang sense of right or wrong niya, malakas siya, malakas masyado. So, I think that the family should enter the picture more instead of uh, leaving it to the government to do things for them. <coughs> Uh, Bill uh, I, this thought just crossed my mind. You can calibrate it downwards or upwards. So how how low can uh, I mean how basic can you get? Uh, families are strongest, uh, most basic, most powerful social, economic, and political unit. You calibrate it upwards. You look at two icons: huh? Ninoy Aquino and President Marcos. We examined President Marcos' 11 flagship programs, petrochemical, <coughs> steel industry, and we examined the vision of Ninoy Aquino. Alam mo, Bill, the same. Two icons, no, <coughs> diametrically opposed politically, no, I don't think by choice, sharing the same vision. Can you imagine yung puhuna na yan for national unity? That's what younger people, younger leaders, you are all almost you're all leaders here, no? What is the duty of leaders? The duty of leaders is not to give the people what they want. No, that's called transactional and market-driven politics or something else. The duty of leaders is to teach the people what they should dream about, what they should work hard for, what they should give their lives for when necessary. And that's what we tried to do 30 years ago. I'm not talking about us, no? Your parents, your grandparents. Learn. Learn and improve. Build the strong nation. Anyone else? Sisters, I'm sorry for being too emotional and passionate. Sister Sarah? You remember her from the film. Stop you, Rex. Baka pagalitan nyo kami. In fact, I was going to agree very, very much with what you said about family, because what we are is what our family wants. If I sit down, they will not see me anymore. <laughs> yeah. So what I, I really agree very, very much with you, because the way we were brought up, um, my mom always told us that when you give, everything comes back to you. And we were always told that even if we had this, we had that. But when she would say was, when you give, everything comes back in double quantity or even treble. Because what little kindness you give somebody else will come back to you. Now, okay, that's on family. And I congratulate everybody. And I'm very, very glad that I'm, I feel, if Sally told me to come, come here, I was not seen on set from Edsa at all. But I was with Father Reuter, and we were the ones to place June Kidley first at Radio Veritas. But when the facilities were bombed, then I had to call for Colonel Saran. Because you were all in, remember? 
confiscated all the media. And this RJ was with and really remember? <laughs> <laughs> and Colonel Saran was the one uh, managing it. But then when they were already with Corey, I mean you know, so I said and father said to me, Where do we have we don't have a station anymore because June was I mean I mean uh, it was already bombed. And I said, Papa Bear, that was our, we called him Papa Bear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, is, that has a history. <laughs> that has a history, actually, why we call him Papa Bear. But I said, Papa Bear, I said, Colonel Saran is with Johnny now. And, and, and I said, what do you mean? I said, he is right now with them, and he's the one managing this ERG. So you want him with it? And he said, OK, call him. So I called, and then he said, Colonel Sloan came and he removed his, you know, what would you call this? He went into civilian clothes and he went to DZRJ. That's the Asento, Asento station, remember? And he went there and he, ch and so we brought June there and we changed the, uh, the crystals, okay? I mean media, that's why I know what I'm talking about. We changed the grid. I and mean, in communication. So we changed, they, they changed the crystals nearer the, the crystals of Radio Veritas. But nobody knew that Radio Veritas was already bombed. And so they thought June was still there. But then they said, what will we call now this, the radio station? And then, because I called the young members of our cast, and I only called 10 boys. And this time, you know, and then, and then they said, oh, well, let's call it Reuter Babies. I said, no, 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 Reuter is a name. I said, we might be traced here in Santa Ana. We were, we were very close to, we are very close to Santa, to Madonna. So that would be for the patient. Exactly. And so I said, okay, what is, well, finally he said, okay, Radio Bandido, RB, Reuter Babies. So Radio Bandido, that's how we got the name, Radio Bandido. So we placed June Kipley, we, we sent the car, the driver, to pick, him, pick her up, and Paolo and Gabe Ricardo. Paolo was only 15, and Gabe was 13, okay? And then we brought them back to the, to the office, and we met again, and so we decided to have June at DZRJ with Paolo, and, and then when, when June saw the, you know, this said, oh my God, this is very near. Malakanyang. And then she was planning, he said, well, just in case the tanks would come, then Paolo, where would we jump? Because then the next building was quite far. <laughs> <laughs> that was what they were planning. But you see, how God allowed all these things? Nobody, and then when Paolo said, June, June, Tita June, Tita June, look, the tank is coming, the tank is coming. Because they could see the tank through the glass windows of RJ, but they could not be seen up because they were up there, because the radio station was there. And so, you see, this is how God allowed the whole thing. Beautiful. And I will never, never forget Edsa. Young people these days are telling me, I, there's still a lot of corruption. I said, I don't care. You cannot talk your way right now if you didn't have the freedom. I will not be able to express all these things right now if I didn't have Edsa. Yeah. 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 Yeah.